And now the James Webb T Space Telescope is identifying objects in the dark ages that by best measurements we have are large, fully developed galaxies. So who ordered that? The James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the apple cart. All of a sudden we realize that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe. Remember these galaxies discovered by James Webb? These are some of the most distant and ancient galaxies ever seen by humans. They are so far away that their light has taken more than 13 billion years to reach us. And they are so massive that they contain billions of stars like our sun. But how did they form so quickly after the Big Bang? How did they grow so large in such a short time? These are some of the questions that puzzle scientists and astronomers who study the early universe. You just heard some of them, like Neil deGrasse Tyson and Mikio Kaku, who have talked about these galaxies and suggested some possible explanations for their existence. But none of these explanations are satisfactory or conclusive. They all require some modifications or revisions to our standard cosmological model of the Big Bang. But what if there is another way to solve this mystery? What if there is a new theoretical model that can explain how these early massive galaxies formed naturally without changing our basic understanding of the universe? Well, that's exactly what a team of astrophysicists from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem has proposed in a recent study published in monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. In this video, we will explore their model and see how it can solve the puzzle of the early massive galaxies. But before we do that, we need to understand what exactly the problem is with these galaxies and why they defy our theories. So let's go back in time and see what the early universe looked like. So the way to think about this is, and this is the way science has worked since basically the year 1600, where Galileo sort of starts codifying what people knew probably should be happening, but no one really did it in large scale. If you have an idea about something, then you test it multiple ways and get other people to test it. And if the tests give you consistent results, you have a new understanding of the universe. When that happens, that knowledge of the universe doesn't go away. It doesn't get undone. What happens typically is you have a deeper understanding of the universe in which that understanding gets embedded. Mm. And you realize that you only understood a small part of a larger whole, but the small parts you did understand, where you had multiple experiments that confirmed it, that doesn't change. Imagine you are an astronomer or astrophysicist who has spent years studying the formation and evolution of galaxies. You have learned that galaxies are the building blocks of the universe and that they come in different shapes and sizes. You have learned that galaxies form from gas and dark matter that clump together under the influence of gravity. You have learned that galaxies grow by forming new stars and by merging with other galaxies. You have learned that galaxies change over time, becoming more complex and diverse as they age. You have learned all this from observing galaxies at different distances and times in the history of the universe. You have a model that explains how galaxies form and evolve, and you are confident that it works well. But one day, you receive a message from your colleagues who are working with the James Webb Space Telescope. They tell you that they have made a stunning discovery. They have found dozens of galaxies that are unlike anything you have ever seen before. These galaxies are so massive and bright that they dwarf any galaxy you have ever observed. These galaxies are so old that they existed when the universe was only a fraction of its current age. These galaxies are so unexpected that they challenge everything you thought you knew about galaxy formation and evolution. How do you react? How do you explain these galaxies? How do you reconcile them with your model? For example, one of the recent discoveries that James made was a protocluster of five massive galaxies that are located at a distance of about 13 billion light years from us, which means that we see them as they were when the universe was only about half a billion years old. These galaxies are so massive that they contain about 10 billion stars each, and they are also very bright and emit a lot of ultraviolet radiation which indicates that they are forming new stars at a very high rate. These galaxies are clustered together in a region that is about 3 million light years across, which is comparable to the size of our local group of galaxies. How did these galaxies form and grow so quickly and so close together? And as we always do on this channel, we are always on top of the new discoveries. 
we have a video where we go into the details of this discovery. The link is in the description. Another recent discovery was a galaxy merger in the early universe. A galaxy merger is when two or more galaxies collide and merge into one larger galaxy. Galaxy mergers are common in the universe, and they can trigger bursts of star formation and shape the evolution of galaxies. However, galaxy mergers are expected to be rare and slow in the early universe, because there was not enough time for galaxies to interact with each other or to be influenced by their environment. But JWST found a galaxy merger that happened when the universe was only about 500 million years old. This merger involved two massive galaxies that each contained about 10 billion stars, and it produced a huge amount of infrared light that indicates intense star formation. This merger is also located in the same protocluster as the five massive galaxies we mentioned before. How did this merger happen so early and so fast? And how did it affect the formation of other galaxies in the protocluster? We also covered this discovery in more detail in a recent video. You can find the link in the description. All these discoveries are amazing and exciting, but they are also puzzling and problematic for our current model of galaxy formation and evolution. They show that there is much more diversity and complexity in the early universe than we thought, and that there are processes that we do not fully understand or account for. They also show that there is a connection between the formation of massive galaxies and the formation of large-scale structures in the universe, such as protoclusters and filaments. How do we explain all these phenomena? How do we reconcile them with our model? Is there a simple and natural way to do that? This is where the new study comes in. In the next section, we will explore this study and see how it proposes a new theoretical model that claims to solve the mystery of early massive galaxies in the universe. The study proposes a new theoretical model that solves the mystery of the formation of early massive galaxies in the universe. The model is based on the idea that the special conditions that prevailed in the primordial galaxies of high density and low abundance of heavy elements allowed the formation of stars with high efficiency without interference from other stars. The key to this idea is the concept of a starburst. A starburst is a short and intense episode of star formation that can produce millions of stars in a few million years. Starbursts can be triggered by various events, such as collisions or mergers of galaxies, or by instabilities in the gas. However, starbursts are usually self-limiting, because as stars form, they also produce feedback that shuts down further star formation. This feedback can be either from stellar winds or from supernovae. The new model suggests that in the early universe, there was a window of opportunity for starbursts to occur without feedback. This window was opened by two factors, low metallicity and high density. Metallicity is a measure of how much heavy elements, such as carbon, oxygen, and iron, are present in the gas. Heavy elements are produced by stars and supernovae, and they affect the cooling and heating of the gas. In the early universe, the metallicity was very low because there were not many stars or supernovae yet. This means that the gas could cool more efficiently and form stars more easily. Density is a measure of how much mass is packed in a given volume. Density affects how fast gravity can overcome pressure and make the gas collapse into stars. In the early universe, the density was very high because the universe was smaller and more compact. This means that the gas could collapse faster and form stars more quickly. The combination of low metallicity and high density created a situation where starbursts could happen without feedback. The reason is that at low metallicity, stellar winds are weaker and supernovae are delayed. Stellar winds are weaker because they depend on how much radiation the stars emit, which depends on how much heavy elements they have. Supernovae are delayed because they depend on how fast the stars evolve, which depends on how much hydrogen they have. At low metallicity, stars have more hydrogen and less heavy elements, so they emit less radiation and evolve slower. This means that at low metallicity, there is a time gap between when stars form and when they produce feedback. This time gap can be as long as a few million years, which is enough for a starburst to produce millions of stars without being stopped by winds or supernovae. Moreover, at high density, there is more gas available to fuel the starburst, and more chances for collisions or instabilities to trigger it. The new model shows that under these conditions, starbursts can produce early massive galaxies with high efficiency and in short timescales. 
The model also explains why these galaxies are clustered together in protoclusters, because they form from regions that are overdense with dark matter and gas. The model also predicts that these galaxies should have distinctive features, such as strong ultraviolet emission and faint infrared emission. These features are consistent with what James Webb observed. So there you have it, a new theoretical model that claims to solve the mystery of early massive galaxies in the universe. Of course, this model is not yet proven or accepted by the scientific community. It still needs to be tested against more observations and simulations, but it is an intriguing and promising idea that may shed new light on how galaxies form and evolve in the cosmos. What do you think? Do you find this model convincing? Do you have any questions or comments? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for any updates on this topic.